there's two big problems that I tried to elucidate today. One in research, where the concept of MEDD is used as a dependent variable. My 10 milligrams of morphine is not necessarily the same as your 10 milligrams of morphine due to a variety of differences, including the pharmacogenomic differences. Accordingly, the tables that doctors rely upon um, are a mess. Um, they're, they're very inconsistent. And again, in research, there's the constant use of MEDD as a dependent variable, and that's wrong because if the dependent variable has been empirically established as invalid, then all the research that uses it is invalid. And this research, of course, is very important in that it is going to ideally inform our attendees' practices. And that's just not happening because of the invalidity. So that's the research piece that trickles over to the practical piece. Uh, most of my time today lecturing was spent discussing the disingenuous opioid guideline writing committees, um, use of MEDD, focusing on everything, or on nothing actually, other than getting that MEDD down when it's an invalid concept. You know, so much emphasis on how much is prescribed rather than, more importantly, to whom are we prescribing? And Dr. Darnell and I have written about this as being a crucial issue. So the CDC guideline is really uh, terrible, um, and it doesn't address important questions and focuses on you know, how much you ought to be prescribing without taking individualized um, genetic makeup and other factors into account. And um, again, an invalid guideline that's agenda-based rather than empirically based is certainly problematic. In particular, I think that it's important that primary care docs who are subject to the chilling effects of these MEDD-based guidelines write op-ed pieces to their local papers, they speak to their um, state medical societies, uh, that they try to organize. You know, I don't think that individual states can afford to have a lot of disgruntled physicians, particularly primary care physicians. You know, by 2025, we're expected to have a shortage of 66,000 primary care physicians in the United States. And 66,000 is an astronomical number. And if this ends up pushing people away from family practice, where most of the prescribing is done, then the family practice and internal medicine, the, we'll call it the primary care crisis, is only going to worsen. And I think that that is going to result in a lot more deaths than does the so-called opioid crisis.